Traveling along Highway 12, probably not happening this morning, Kelly. We're going to yeah. have an update, actually, um, from someone in the Outer Banks there coming up a little bit later in the yeah. show. Yeah, an inspection saw there was no structural damage, but still they have to look out for some flooded parts of that highway still. Uh, we bring in the airplane and talk delays, and we think it's going to be a busy day in terms of delays, especially with the wind picking up in the northeast, rain eventually affecting us as well, but probably not until your evening commute for some of you, and you can take a look at the expected delays on the board. I just checked, by the way, no cancellations, at least not yet anyway. Way, but we could see some of that from the New York airports as well as Boston's Logan Airport. Again, wind is going to be the primary concern as well as Philadelphia. No delays, though, for Atlanta or getting into some of those airports in Florida. Uh, just a cool time in Florida, though. So if you're packing for a trip down there, bring along your sweatshirt. Can't give me snow. You know? Seriously, I agree. You know, Freezing rain is the worst. The worst. So let's have a look. We have multiple winter weather advisories. But what does that mean for you? It means you're going to see this as we head into tonight and into tomorrow as That's well. That's right. Some of that dry air in place this morning is kind of helping a few spots to yeah. not get some of that freezing rain and drizzle this morning. But this is really going to fill in as we head into the nighttime hours tonight, I think, and into tomorrow morning. Yeah. And it's also really rough, I think, that some spots like Concord could be getting a little freezing rain yeah. and then maybe finishing off with a little dusting of snow on top of that. The pink, that's where you're going to get the freezing rain. This is sleet, really, where you see the purple. And, of course, the blue mm -hmm. is equivalent to snow. So let's talk about how you get these different different precipitation types, all right? So the atmosphere, I always say, is like a hamburger, right? You have to look at each different layer because right. if you just look at what's happening at the bottom, you're like, why am I getting frozen stuff right here? Right. And so essentially, it's really cold right where we are, but the rest of the atmosphere is hot. I just find it so fascinating that this can happen. Absolutely. And so sleet, your cold <laughs> layer at the surface is a little deeper. A little deeper. And so it actually probably starts with snow melts in this little mild warm layer and then has time to freeze yeah. back up before it reaches the ground. So sleet is the stuff that bounces. Sleet has a beat. That's what I always say. So mm -hmm. what's going to cause all this? Well, we have all this warm tropical moisture coming in and then we have our cold pocket coming in from the west and we can show that to you. All right. So there's that cold air swinging in. But again, how thick is that cold air will make or break the type of weather that you have. Right. So cold air more dense than warm air. So it kind of wedges underneath it. Mm -hmm. That warm moisture coming in off the coast then rides up over it, and that's how we get our different layers of our precipitation type and our different temperatures at different levels of the atmosphere. Okay, so the actual number you see, that's what's happening at the surface. But we want to look at where the freezing mark is at 850, which is just above the surface. Again, we'll right. make or break the precip type that you have. So that's that yellow line that we're going to continue to track. And there you can see some of that pink starting to break out a little bit. The coastal areas, I-95, by yeah, the way, rain. just rain for you. So we're not worried about that mix. So some of the elevations, though, could be a real problem. So all that cold air starts to drain eastbound, and that means a little more snow. But as um, Jackie mentioned, we're going to stay plenty warm here along the I-95 corridor, so we won't have any issues with that. But icing could be a problem. Yeah. You know, I think just a few slick spots here and there. All right, Kelly. And nor'easters are more frequent from September through April. Yes, this is really kind of our first one. Though, Kelly, I don't know. I mean, this is like the saddest looking nor'easter really <laughs> I've ever seen. It's pretty, I mean, it's pretty pitiful. It's, I mean, pretty, come on. it's pretty far off the coast, too, yeah, thankfully. So yeah. we are going to feel the effects of it. Obviously, the wind and also that mixed precipitation tomorrow will be an issue for a lot of us in the interior sections. Uh, but rainy times for places like New York City today. Rain for the Virginias and, Carol and also North Carolina. Uh, West Coast looking hot and dry. And therefore, we do have an elevated fire danger. Red flag warnings remain in effect across SoCal. You do see it here from Ventura all the way through Los Angeles. County and down into San Diego as well. All right, as we go through time, we will notice these clippers like systems moving very quickly from the plains through the Midwest, delivering kind of a mix of rain and snow to a place like Chicago. New York City, 51 though, on the milder side of things. And look at Atlanta to Miami. Gorgeous weather as we head through the day Wednesday. Not so gorgeous in the West, but keep in mind we need the moisture out here. We finally have chances for rain in places like Los Angeles. That system moving through the four corners where we have severe drought in place. And then as we head towards Saturday, or Friday, we see that mixed precipitation across upstate New York and northern New England. All rain, though, down toward the south. We still are trying to get rid of the drought in the southeast as well. Looks like we'll be eating away at that. And for Sunday, here we go with the rain along the coastal sections and a little bit of snow for the higher elevations in the northeast. This dip in the jet stream, that's going to basically overtake this disturbance and then ride it along eastbound. All right, so that's what's going to happen with it. As it does and ejects, this will be our next big 
weather maker. As we get into our Thursday is when it really starts to crank, but it's going to be pulling that moisture northbound. It's going to bring rain, a little bit of snow with it too. Thursday, I think, is the day when you really feel the most impacts from it. On Wednesday, still trying to get his act together. You'll see some snow here on the uh, north side, on the back side of it. Great news for, you know, some of those ski resorts there in the west, but rain for places like Chicago. I mean, Chicago already seeing snow a couple times. It looks like it's going to be a rain event for us. So there you go on Thursday, spreading into even the Northeast, as a matter of fact, and all the way down into Texas. So we're in an active pattern. We're seeing systems just continue on and move into Thursday night. Maybe some freezing rain into the New England, into the New England, as I say, into the Northeast. There's really more New England than into the Northeast. There's that snow for you again, not loads of it, but enjoy the light stuff while it's here because we know it's only a matter of time before you're seeing 30 inches and not three inches that rainfall one to two for us into the Midwest maybe a little snow sprinkled in as well so how about St. Louis when does it get into you Thursday into Thursday night but guys at least the temperatures aren't going you know with the back very popular the, now very popular I want to take it for a test drive I do too yeah. <laughs> even if I don't buy it all right guys uh, we are your travel headquarters here at MHQ let's bring the plane in and talk delays because we do have one already at LaGuardia this morning uh, we have the wind that's going to be the primary problem today across the northeast bring in the rain too and we could see a slowdown there also on the roadways and we've had some slick conditions in parts of western Virginia and northeastern Pennsylvania with some freezing rain in the Poconos. So for t today, it's possible we could see delays at the New York airports as well as Boston and Philadelphia. Otherwise, a good flying day for your Monday across the south. But we need to talk about LaGuardia because this is where we do have a, a delay averaging about an hour and a half now. And it's courtesy of the wind that's going to be with us. It is raining currently at this particular location. I believe Kennedy has some light rain being reported there as well. So because of the wind and the runway configuration, that never is a good thing when those winds get up and over 15, 20 miles per hour as is going to be the situation today. So gusting between 15 and 20 miles per hour around Kennedy. Um, we've got it painted in red, which means weather delays are likely here as well as up towards Boston with that wind picking up off the water. And then, of course, you've got the pink across upstate New York. It's a pretty color normally, but not on a weather map, guys, because that is where we have the freezing rain potential. Now you know, in nor'easters are more frequent from September through April. We're in nor'easter season. I don't, I mean, can we call it nor'easter season? Yeah. I've never kind of said that. Have you ever <laughs> said so. nor'easter season? I haven't said it, but I would say it could be a thing. Yes. All right, let's make it a thing. Coastal <laughs> storm turning into that nor'easter. I was so that great. northeast wind. That's what's really all about affecting the northeast, too. I think a lot of people get confused or think it's going to be a major snowstorm. But rarely, we're just talking about rain and some snow and ice, especially the interior sections of the northeast. It's more about that wind off the water that can give us some issues at the coast. Across uh, Virginia, North Carolina, a bit of rain here today. High country of uh, western Virginia dealing with some icing. We wish we could get some moisture in California. And we have an elevated fire danger. Red flag warnings went into effect yesterday and are still with us today down to the Mexican border. As we take a look at our forecast for tomorrow, here comes a little clipper through Chicago. Uh, rain possibly ending as a bit of snow and then eventually scooting on through the northeast. You'll notice some mild temperatures across the south. Mid-60s in Atlanta. Watch for thunderstorms in Dallas as we head for Thursday. A lot of rain for the middle of the country, but there will be some snow on the northern edges of that. Some of you start with rain and end with snow. And here's a look at the rest of the weekend in the northeast getting